skate date. Whoop, whoop. Woo, we love skate date. Did you say stage gate? Skate date. <laughs> skate date is a podcast. And what's that podcast, baby? It's a podcast about skating and dating. And not skating and dating. <laughs> Skate Date is a podcast created by two roller skaters in love that Ooh. had nothing to better nothing better to do during the quarantine. And Shev, aka me, had this like <laughs> wild idea about like maybe we should start a podcast. And Revel was like, "We're yes. doing it," and I was like, "Oh no, what I get myself into?" But it's fun, so we're here and we discuss more than just skating because we're like roller skaters, yeah. But we're also people with feelings and lots and lots of opinions. And so many opinions. We don't always have the same opinion on things. Either. No, we do not. If so, you listen to last week, as I said. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we talk about what's going on in the real world and the will world. Yeah, we do. I'm Courtney Shove. And I'm Courtney Shove. And I'm Rebel Rouser. And I'm Courtney Shove. Oh my gosh, we're confusing them. <laughs> I'm Shove. I'm Rebel. And together. We're Shovel. Can you dig it? I can. <laughs> Guess when I started to dig it, babe? When? Three years ago. Mm-hmm. This month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've almost been together for three very long <laughs> uphill both direction years. <laughs> like, have you seen that movie, 12 Years a Slave? Just kidding. It's not. <laughs> what the hell? It's not that bad. No. I can, uh, again, I am Courtney Shove. I am black. I can make that joke. No one else on this podcast can. But no, it's been amazing. She is the princess bubblegum to my Marceline. Um, she's cute. So I kept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, our anniversary is coming up. I'm excited. Where will you be spending our anniversary, babe? Away from you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even a joke. <laughs> she will be. <laughs> but it wasn't on purpose. We were supposed to be spending it away together, but then she canceled on me. I thought that it was like your anniversary present to me. Like, guess what? You get to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, you finally got it after three years. Basically, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rebel will be at the famous Astro Den. Shredtopia. Yeah. And I'll be doing some side hustle work here. Just being, you know, doing hot girl shit. <laughs> but I also, like, can't skate yet. So I'll basically just be playing with animals and spending time in nature. She'll be doing farm work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, so today's topic is vaccines <laughs> ah! just kidding it's fine are you excited to talk about vaccines I i'm have, excited to have a vaccine i have lots of thoughts about it so i have I'm lots excited. of thoughts too excellent what else are we talking about today babe um we're gonna talk about how the world is opening up for skaters like rollouts and derby and then I have a lot of thoughts about. Yeah, we that. have lots of thoughts about that. And then uh, also we're gonna talk about we have a find your skate date and a deer shovel moment. I'm Dope. excited. Dope. But before we do all that, we have a fake ad slash. It's not fake. It's a real ad. But it's not <laughs> like a sponsored ad. It's and it's just just listen. It's a self promoting ad. It's, it's a just yeah just listen. Do you ever just sometimes feel like vanity is supposed to be bad, right? But fat vanity, it's a beautiful thing. Ooh. So I don't know if you all have seen my Doja Fat poster. Beautiful. That was literally taken on an iPhone by the infamous Rebel Rouser. Infamous. <laughs> it was taken towards the end of my short film and... It features my um, big black booty, <laughs> and in it's amazing. In a cow swimsuit. In a cow swimsuit on a red a long stool. aqua wig. Yes, it's a lot. It's like Doja Fat on steroids. Um, yeah, with I was the girl with all the cake that day, every day. To Which be is honest. basically just your dream. Yeah. So one day I was at work, and literally I don't know what popped in my head, and I just went, "OMG! I need to put that image." On a t-shirt, yes, I will walk and skate around with a t-shirt with my giant butt on it. <laughs> and, of course, I have skates on it, too. Amazing. And then people will be like, oh, my God, I love your shirt. I'm like, thanks, that's me. And they're be like, that's your butt? And I'll turn around and be like, duh. Check it. <laughs> Check it out. So you, too, can now walk and skate and sleep 
with my butt on your chest. <laughs> Wait, I need to order one of those. Well, you just go to www.fatfemfatal.com or on my Etsy, Fat Girl is Moxie. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go there right now. <laughs> Let's stop the podcast. Also, there might be something new up there too. It's a mini rebel sticker. Oh, oh my gosh, a mini <laughs> rebel that. sticker. Rebel is the Pisces I am the Pisces skater. So if you want to rock a mini rebel, go get a sticker or a print. That's so cute. I love that. <laughs> but you want to know what else? What else? People, when they're skating around in their Doja Fat shirts, can mm -hmm. also wear cute things on their ears from Cheers to the Queer Shop. Woo! Yeah, that's right. So I heard the call. So many people. So I've been making earrings that are dangle earrings. But I heard the call and people were like, not all of us like dangle earrings, okay? And I was like, oh, got it. So I made post earrings that are little skates and they come in a myriad of colors. So there's one. Not a myriad. Yeah, there's eight posts on each little thing. And one of them is a rainbow. So all the posts are different colors, including pink and aqua because they are required. <laughs> and then one set is a warm set. So it has like red, orange, yellow, and pink. And then one set is a cool set. So it has like green, blue, aqua, and lavender. Ooh, and the aqua will really pull out the wig on your Doja Fat shirt. Oh my God, so <laughs> cute. So yeah, so those, if you wanted to get a pair, a set for a loved one, also they come on the cutest packaging. Like it is, I'm proud of it. It's my favorite thing that I've put in my shop so far. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you wanted to get that, you can go to Cheers to the Queers on Etsy. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. So, yeah, if you want to support us, that's how you can do it. Oh, my gosh. So, funny story. I didn't know. Like, when he kept saying, like, I'm ordering post earrings, I was like, what the hell is she talking about? Oh, you didn't know what I was talking I've about? I've never heard anyone say, like, post earrings. And I'm like. Because <laughs> they're on post. I know, but I've always just heard them called studs. Like, stud earrings are on like that yeah so I never, those too yeah so like when i look at your skates i'm like they're all like, they're like stud earrings they're skate studs yeah so we so we named it skate and stud on him whenever you dress mask you are also a skate stud yeah it's perfect <laughs> but yeah so it's still every time you say posts i like i'm making posts i'm like what is she talking about <laughs> my brain's still not used to it after like 34 years of like just thinking <laughs> there's studs and then like i don't know the other ones are just like dangly's like dangly's know, hook earrings like <laughs> i never really yeah, thought about it i don't before. know i never really thought about it before either that's super funny <laughs> well oh my gosh. That being said, let's move on into the real world, shall we? That's not the right tune. I rewrote it. It's not the tune at all. <laughs> it could be whatever I see it is. <laughs> I could have thrown a little... Rebels die. Okay, okay, all right. Well, in this real world segment, we're going to talk about vaccines. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> what? <laughs> was that supposed to be a dramatic thing? It was, but then dun, I dun, dun, like dun. got stuck in my throat because I was still kind of laughing at you not it's, being able okay, to wait. do the right. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Wait. <laughs> wait, what about this? <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. That's dun, 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 That's what you were doing. What if it's like, oh my, that's the horror movie. Okay, yeah. so anti-vaxxers oh. are hearing that sound when they hear vaccines. Yeah, I, know, I know, A lot of us are hearing like, woo, who let the dogs out? <laughs> who, who, who? We're who? the dogs and we're coming out once we're all vaccinated. <laughs> I'm coming out. All right, so uh, Rebels just normally like this, but me, I am like this because she got a nap. I got a power nap, and it's been a long day, and like haven't had caffeine all day. <laughs> so, um, vaccines. We both got vaccinated this last week, and so we're gonna tell you about it because we think that it's quality entertainment podcast material. <laughs> oh my gosh! First of all, like I okay, this whole time, as we've said on the podcast. We were like, oh, yeah, our roommate will be the last one to get vaccinated, blah, blah, blah. Like, straight up. We've said Re that so many times. Y'all yeah. know. Y'all know. Like, so Rebel got her shot first because she's an educator. Um, And then. 
an educator. I feel like since COVID started, people have never revered me as much as this ever in my life. Like everyone's like, oh, you're an educator. Oh, wow, <laughs> teachers. Wow, you do. Like I'm like, what? Never have I gained this respect in my life. And you never will again. Never again. <laughs> so we get, I literally, this is me like, Sitting in my car, just being like, la, 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 home from work. I'm just being like, oh, I'm just so tired. Got to go in. And then I see my roommate get dropped off by her partner. And then, like, I get out. I'm like, oh, I should just go in the house. I've been sitting here too long. And then she's like, oh, I forgot my key. And I'm like, oh, cool. Perfect timing. And then I was like, how's your day going? And she's like, oh, cool. I just got a vac- my first shot. I just got vaccinated. And I was like, in my head, all I heard was like, what the? F, like, why not me? Are you All you heard me? was, you're a loser. All I heard was, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> You so, lost the vaccine race. Like, all of a sudden, everything just went blurry. I was, like, <laughs> I'm sweating. I was, like, am I never going to get it? Like, you got it for me? Like, I, like, I don't no know. No shade to our roommate. No we love her so much. I don't know why. Like, I just thought, like, oh, she would just be chilling, and then she would just get it when she got it. And that, like, I would be, like, hustle mode or someone would hook me up miraculously and I'd just have it, right? And the truth was, I put zero effort to even try to figure out how to hustle myself in the system. <laughs> so that lit a fire under my butt. And literally that day, I made an appointment. <laughs> I got an appointment that day because I was just, like, literally stressing myself out to make sure it happened. And, like, literally what? had it that week that week yeah, yeah that next week. week and then i was something? just like oh that was easy oh yeah the next week and i was like that was easy you like had that button like yeah. that that was easy seriously but babe go ahead and talk about your experience okay but you got the johnson and johnson vaccine right yeah so i got johnson johnson do you want me to talk about like my whole experience right yeah now? okay yeah. cool yeah all right i uh first of all i was like okay i like they're doing it for food service right now and for what is it like pre-existing conditions and rebel and is people not- older than 65 yeah so no but it just opened to oh, this yeah. so it was like a new wave of people and i was like i gotta ride that wave i'm not working at coffee bean anymore and also i'd be like right in there so i may have had someone that was like able to be like okay you work for me here's a paper and i was like dope thanks homie <laughs> <laughs> later when the fbi is investigating covid vaccine fraud no one cares. they're going to listen to this episode <laughs> oh and they're gonna be like technically nothing bad happened and i'll tell you why because also I could fall back on the fact that even though they're not saying obese people can get it as we as we talked, they are saying it, it does now. count as a. They're not blatantly saying it though. So it says you, it on the website now. Okay, cool. But you have yeah. to look for it. They don't say the words uh, yeah. if you're obese you can go. So um, it does qualify if you're obese, which means you probably think like I'm not obese, but like trust me, it's the white man's BMI. The BMI not, is messed so, up. You're probably, you're probably obese. obese. <laughs> like you're, you don't think you are, but you probably you're are. like I'm a size ten. <laughs> I was obese before I started gaining weight. Right. <laughs> it's it's a joke. So anyways you can go and so like now i'm thinking if this is why because anyways i i like start looking for an appointment can't find one anywhere and i knew there was this whole thing at long beach convention center and i was like well i guess if i spend two hours i can just figure that out and go on saturday and then i looked at everywhere else couldn't find one and my friend randomly texts like oh yeah i went to kaiser and i was like wait I have Kaiser <laughs> so <laughs> I went on Kaiser to see like well I've never made an appointment still new like insurance for me and sure enough it was like oh how many miles and I put it in and literally 10 places popped up all with availabilities and I was like what the <laughs> nice to have insurance what a privilege so I signed up and it was like yeah tomorrow <laughs> I was like dope so I freaking go to uh by the pyramid on Cal State Long Beach um, property no real line to even find parking everyone's parking guy was super nice I didn't have a pin to fill out he gave me a pin I was like oh this is nice found parking easily got out of my car everyone was socially distanced it was eerily quiet it was super organized um I walk up the lady's like oh my god you look so cute and the lady next to her's like oh you're gonna you about to get a vaccine and a husband and I was like this is <laughs> yikes <okay." laughs> I was like okay I get it I have my shells bells I have my little crop top on I um, even false eyelashes. I was like, it's a it's a good day. I'm getting vaccinated. I'm one step closer to be able to hug people and not be afraid anymore. I'm living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk up and 
She didn't ask for any paperwork. She just asked for my ID and the paper I pulled out. And I was like, hmm. And in hindsight, I'm like wondering if it's because they were just like, yeah, she's fat, whatever. But then like, they, I didn't hear them asking anyone for paperwork. I just feel like, why are you going to turn people away for something that we're trying to get everyone vaccinated yeah, so for? Yeah, if they have an appointment, like whatever. Whatever. Like, if like, I worked, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care at all if I was working at the vaccine. I would probably why we're not. Probably but. only care about your ID to make sure that like, yeah, you have a legit vaccination card. Like, but like. I, who cares? Like, you could have been, like, 18, fully healthy, and just been like, sup. <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, get the vaccine. After the ladies are telling me how cute I am, thank you, ladies, um, <laughs> they're like, okay, you're getting the Johnson Johnson today. And literally, all, all of a sudden, again, it was like, dun-dun-dun. Because <laughs> all I heard was, like, Rebel talking to her coworker and being like, I just feel like, you know, like, every time you talk to someone, you're like, what did you get? And then, like, if they say Moderna, Moderna we're like, uh, and if they say Johnson, we're like, oh, you're trash. Like, we got Pfizer. Okay, we're joking. I feel like I need to qualify that with, like, that was a very big joke. You are fine if you get any vaccine. Like, But then also, like, I had, remember, like, I hadn't looked into it enough. And I just remember thinking, like, doesn't it only work, like, 61%? Like, uh, does that mean, like, this is, like, I'm 50-50 practically? Like, you, you'll probably still get COVID. So I was like, okay, whatever. At least it's just one shot. Upon investigation, I was like, oh, it's it's pretty good and less side effects. So anyways, I get into the line and it was so organized that they were letting people that were getting their second shot like cut, like they're pulling them, putting them separate. And literally the whole experience maybe took like 30 minutes from like getting to the first table to getting the shot. Didn't even fill the shot, to be honest. They Meanwhile, they say, stabbed me. <laughs> they literally stabbed me. Wait, Wait a second. Okay, That's okay, for okay, your okay. story, lady. Back <laughs> up off of my Johnson Johnson story. Okay, okay. So uh, back to Johnson Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. So she pricks me. And then, like, literally, I remember just bracing myself because last time I got a shot was, like, a year ago, and it was for a tetanus shot, and I thought shit hurt. So I thought it was going to hurt really bad. She does it. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. And then since it was through Kaiser, they had like my medical history and they had my paperwork. They're like, okay, have a good day. And then they're like, you're due for, you're overdue for a pap smear and you should join the Smokers Anonymous group. And I was like, uh, <laughs> thank you. I do need a pap smear. <laughs> it's due. But I also haven't touched a cigarette in like a year and a half, maybe two years now. I don't even know. Go me for not smoking a damn cigarette during a fucking pandemic because yeah. I really wanted one. But anyways, so then they make you sit for 15 minutes in observation, but literally no one was watching us. Like, I could have just turned around and walked out, but I was like, I don't want to be that person that just starts walking to my car and passes out. So no side effects right away except for my arm hurting. Like, it burned a lot, like, shortly after, and I was like, ooh, and then that kind of phased out, but then instantly I was, like, dehydrated. I could not get enough water. My head was, like, wah, 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 and I still went to work, but then, like, I had, like, really severe, like, body aches. Like, everything that I had hurt recently, or usually hurts a little bit, was accentu accentu accentuated. Accentuated. Yeah, that. Accentuated. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, it was just, like, uh, and then, like, being tired and stuff, but. I mean, I'm good now. It lasted like 48 hours, and it wasn't even that bad. Um, nausea, t nausea too. I can't talk today, but <laughs> yeah. So okay, so then my experience. Um, <laughs> let's just buckle on up because it was nothing like this one's. Um, so I realized that I qualified to get the vaccine, and then my friend actually signed me up for an appointment, uh, which was really great. But he was only able to get it like. It was just luck that he was able to find me an appointment when I got one. And it was at Cal Poly Pomona, which is a solid 45 minutes with no traffic from our house. And I had a broken leg, which means that I could not drive my car. So I needed <laughs> to find someone to take me to Cal Poly Pomona in the middle of the day on a Thursday. So... I called my dad <laughs> and my dad was like, sure, hon, like I'll take you. So my dad takes me to Cal Poly Pomona. This is my first shot. I'm getting the Pfizer shot. I didn't know I was getting the Pfizer shot. They don't tell you until you get there. And then they're like, you're getting this one. And then they stab you and you're like, okay. Um, they definitely checked my pay stubs. Like they 100% check to make sure that I was there um, as an educator. Also, I was on crutches. 
<laughs> I crutched from like one area to the next past the people who had the wheelchairs all the way through this line where I was like standing on my crutches. So I was like <laughs> trying to like ease my own <laughs> like pain and tiredness. And then I get to the front of this first part of the line because it was multi-tiered lines, kind of like Disneyland or something. It was in a parking structure. And the guy goes, oh, has nobody offered you a wheelchair? And I was like, no, but a wheelchair would actually be really, really nice right now. And he was like, okay, please like just hold up so he goes and he gets me a wheelchair and he was like yeah they definitely should have given you a wheelchair I was like oh well this is really great I'm stoked to have a wheelchair thank you so much so then I go and I wait in another line and then I go and I like got the shot and um, waited for the 15 minutes they were straight up there is a gate around at the place that I went there's a gate around the place where you have to wait for 15 minutes and someone stands guard. Someone stands guard. Wait, wait. And they put a sticker on you that says the time you're allowed to be released. Oh, well, and no. And they go around and they check each person to make sure you're okay. It was so intense. No, there was one guy at a table. We were, like, in a parking garage on the first level. And then so literally you could have just hopped aside. And people are just kind of scattered around, some sitting, some not. And then, like, on your paper, it just had, like, the time you came in. Yeah, no, there was... <laughs> It was all separated out. Like, there were chairs separated out. There was a flood of people. It was social distance, so I felt very safe. I was exhausted. In your I cage? Was crutching <laughs> in my cage, yes. And, like, this lady was like, is it your time yet? Sit back down, like, to people. Like, it was crazy. People were trying to, like, sneak out when she was talking to other people. Like, it was really intense. So um, that was my first experience with my first, uh, first vaccine. And... Um, when I got that first vaccine, I couldn't lift my hand above my head. Like my arm would not do this. Like I would only, I was only able to lift it like right here as it was so sore. And the only way I was able to relieve that soreness was by massaging my arm and putting CBD on my arm. So that was my first vaccine. So then fast forward three weeks and same day as Shove gets her Johnson and Johnson vaccine, I go to get my second Pfizer vaccine and I had my dad take me again because I still broken leg <laughs> still broken still can't drive myself to Cal Poly Pomona and um, I get there and they have completely turned around like the 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 way that they had orchestrated the <laughs> vaccine intake and everything from the first time to the second time, it was like I was in a different location. Like, clearly, when I first went, it was, like, everyone's first day. And then <laughs> the second time I went, it was, like, being at Disneyland when there's no lines. Like, way too many people to help you. Someone offered me a wheelchair right away. Someone was in charge of just pushing me around. <laughs> like straight up um, and I was like it's okay like if you have something else to do like I can totally like wheel myself and they were like no we would never dare and I was like this is different um, and then I went <laughs> to get my vaccine and the lady straight up was like <laughs> lunch am I right like coming back from lunch is the worst like you never remember what you're supposed to do and I was like <laughs> <laughs> and then and then she goes, I'm going to demonstrate on you, babe. No. Okay. No. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate right here. So she like <laughs> uses the alcohol swab really fast. She like, it goes like this. And I swear to God, she grabs the vaccine and then just stabs me with it. Like I've never seen anyone. I've never seen anyone <laughs> administer a shot so fast <laughs> and so with so much impact than in that moment. Like it was crazy. I was like, whoa, did you just punch me? <laughs> because I feel more <laughs> maybe that's like the tactic now is that we're just like, oh, it feels like oh a punch God. instead of a shot. But it was like very shocking anyway. So that maybe that's um, why uh thirty nine percent of Americans are <laughs> Afraid to get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably. So what are your side effects? Um, so then, yeah, so my side effects were all horrible. Uh, I literally felt like I had COVID. Um, the day that I went home, I fell asleep immediately. I also had that same thing where I got dehydrated immediately. Like mm -hmm. super, super dehydrated immediately. I was like, oh my God. I, on the way home, I was like, ah. <laughs> like it was so bad and then um I got home I fell asleep for like it was like 
early. I fell asleep for like four hours in the afternoon. And then the next day I woke up and I felt like I had been run over by a bus. And then the bus had realized they ran me over and like backed up and then like went forward again. Like it felt, <laughs> I was like feverish. I had chills. I was achy. I was nauseous. I was hot and cold. Like I had a pounding headache. I, it was so miserable. I am so glad it's over. Oh my God, it was miserable. But anyways, oh, there was points where I like felt like I couldn't breathe. Like it was super fun, um, but it went away. Today, I really, really feel great. <laughs> um, it's been like easing off every day, but Does that's- Does your arm still hurt a little bit? A little. Yeah, like when I touch it, it's like, like a bruise. It hurts a little, but like not like a ton. It yeah. feels like I did a workout, which makes mm. me feel like really strong, you know? anti-covid strong yeah. that is um so yeah so that was my experience with a vaccine and yeah. it looks like the it's it seems like the american rollout's going pretty well yeah minus I, the people not wanting to take it but what's going on with global well i mean i so i actually just read this whole um they did a big study in America and it just came out a few days ago and I just read about it and it's saying that vaccine hesitancy is actually down. So the 39% was something I had heard mm. or recently, but not as recent as this. And they're saying that vaccine hesitancy is down to about 23%, Woo! which is really great. Wait, don't we only need 20? What we is need 70 ish percent for her, herd, herd immunity. immunity. <sighs> yeah. 70, 75 ish. Yeah. Come on, and so America. it's been going down, like the vaccine hesitancy, but a lot of people are freaking out because of the symptoms that people are getting. They're way less than COVID itself. Yeah. And I just, I agree because I feel like I, and this is what I kept telling myself. I kept telling myself, Rebel, you've been hungover before. It's awful. But when you're hungover, you just count down the hours to when it's going away completely, you know? And so that's what I was doing. Like, I was also, just counting you were, down the hours. Your, you, your side effects weren't even COVID-like. They were, like, flu-like. Yeah, and that's what like, most people are saying. It wasn't are like saying, you were like, like I can't breathe. I can't taste things. I can't. It's like So, like, I think you got to be careful when you say, I felt like I had COVID because it was like you had the flu. Yeah, I guess it's what I imagine COVID is like since I've never had it. So it was definitely flu-like. It was definitely flu like and it was just like it was so bad. Yeah, but and it literally worth lasted. It, it literally less. lasted twenty four <laughs> hours. Yeah. And then like after the first twenty four hours the first twenty four hours were definitely the worst, like mm -hmm. that first day after I got the shot. And then after that it was like it went down to just achiness and then it went to down to just like chills or whatever and Yeah. Yeah. It's just sad because like someone messaged me and they were like they literally said, Help we have no vaccines here. My president's crazy. I'm in Brazil. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, I don't even know how to respond to that. And it's like I do know because they're, like, literally digging, like, mass graves and, like, just fuck in, like, freaking fields. And it's, like, terrifying because they're not doing anything about it. And they have, like, all these different strains. And it just is a reminder that, like, we are lucky. We're so privileged. And we're lucky to be, like, as crappy as, like, our healthcare system. It's yeah, and it's just, like... <laughs> At least, like, they're doing something about it. So finally. It good. Yeah, Fin finally. 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 Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, because globally, um, the rollout of vaccines is not looking too hot. And that's one of the reasons why RollerCon is canceled this year. No, is, I know. I know we're all very sad about this. But one of the reasons why RollerCon is canceled is because, like, it is a global event. And... Like, there are way too many countries that, like, will not have people vaccinated by the summer or even August yeah. or the end of this year. And so it's hard, you know? Yeah. What about anti-vaxxers? I don't know. I'm just, like, so... Okay, anti... Okay, just... This is just a PSA. The reason why I wrote this on the notes is because I just want to be clear, just in case anyone out there is like, oh, I've heard that vaccines don't work or, like, vaccines cause autism. Um, let me, let me just bring up my notes really fast. I don't even remember this guy's name. <laughs> oh, Andrew Wakefield. I knew it before I even brought it up. Okay. So in 1998, Andrew Wakefield did a study that was completely and entirely falsified and not accurate at all that linked vaccines to the onset of autism. And it has been disproven by 
by many, many scientists and many, many studies. And from this Andrew Wakefield medical um, briefing or <laughs> publishing, mm -hmm. uh, it, all these people came out and were like, yeah, no, vaccines cause autism. Like, vaccines are bad. Like, vaccines, ugh. And well, that's where the anti-vaxxer, that yeah, person. Jennifer, Jen, no, Jenny. Oh my gosh, what's her? Oh name? my gosh, what's her name? She was on what I, what? Uh, I don't remember, but she was like a, a famous celebrity. So she, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up. Jenny McCarthy. So Jenny McCarthy was like the spokesman, spokeswoman for being like vaccines. Was it even her child got autism? Yes, it was yeah. her child got autism. Aut like the vaccines caused my child to have autism and blah blah blah. From my extent of knowledge, okay, so I, as someone that's not even researched it, what I always thought was that a small percent, it does happen. No, it's and is that true? correlation, not causation. Okay. Meaning sometimes people who get vaccines also get autism. That okay, does cool. not mean that the vaccines created the autism. Okay. That's what's yeah, happening. Yeah, because, like, I was just, like, the closest I've heard was, like, oh, yeah, it's so small that it's, like, the, it's hardly ever going to happen, and also that the benefits are so much greater than that, like, for polio and all this stuff. So, like, it was, like, oh, I always thought it was, like, oh, well, maybe it could happen, but it makes it's so It's not much... autism. It's, yeah. like, random drawbacks. Like, yeah. Like, there is that person who got the flu vaccine and then, like, yeah. had those weird side effects. Yeah. But it, it's... With things in science, that's what it is. It's like for the greater good of the <laughs> of everything, and I just feel like it's so. I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about it because I have I know people that are anti vaxxers and it's like one of those things that I just try to steer away from. Um, I just can't when I'm talking to them. <laughs> I just like you have to, like. Do you believe in science or do you not? <laughs> Period. That is the question. Um, vaccines are backed by science. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I don't know. I can't take a stronger stance on that. I don't, I just don't, I can't take a weaker stance on that either. Like, I just, I, I can't, yeah. Yeah, well, in the black community, a lot of, there's a lot of black people that are like, oh, fuck the vaccine. Like, oh, hell no. Nah. Like, I'm not stupid. I ain't gonna get that, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I, and it, a lot of it stems from lack of knowledge and also, harm it's basically generational trauma because the government has been like here's your vaccine and it's like we're actually sterilizing you to kind of get rid of the black community or like been lied to or taken advantage by the government so many times that like when it comes to conspiracy theories and all these things like it's easy to prey upon people that have been in this system where they don't get the education they need and frankly it's trauma mixed with ignorance and when I say ignorance of the black community I don't say they're stupid we're not stupid it's just we don't get the same amount of knowledge that other people get we don't get the education in a lot of our black communities so the black communities are getting hit the hardest with COVID because we don't have anything that's necessary for us to fight it off or we're forced to work these essential worker jobs then we're also not getting the vaccine because we don't trust the system as well because the system has exploited us. So I feel like a lot of black people do tend to be, I don't know if it's in the brown community too, but for sure in the black community just tend to be anti-vaxxers for that reasoning. And it's just so hard because we just need to get the message out there and education out there. Access to education is privilege. Yep. Um, oh man, I was going to say something. I totally forgot it because that point was so good, babe. Um, but oh my gosh, like, I just feel like still we're gonna like, <laughs> like one day me and Rebel and Bowie number two are gonna be sitting on the couch eating popcorn watching TV and it's gonna be like, did you take the Pfizer vaccine? <laughs> oh my God. Do you remember like when I first, when the COVID, like when it first hit and they were first like talking about vaccines and I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I'm taking the vaccine as soon as it comes out because I don't trust that. Yep. I was straight up, yeah, like... And we were, well, I was like, don't worry, the nurses, we'll just see what happens to, like, healthcare workers first. Yeah. Did you get the AstraZeneca vaccine in 2021? <laughs> you might be entitled to compensation. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know anything about AstraZeneca, but... <laughs> but yeah, so I just feel like we won't know till we know. There might be some weird side effect that pops up. And, like, 
you know, it's a freaking pandemic. We got to do what we got to do. We're just trying to get our lives back to normal. And yeah, like some people won't wear a mask and they're like, if I die, I die. And I'm like, I'm going to get a vaccine if I die, I die. Like, Seriously. I'm at least being proactive about it. Whatever the symptoms or side effects are, they can't be as bad as COVID. So <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right. Should we? We should. Go into the wheel world. I don't know if anyone was watching my Instagram stories last Saturday, but I was really disappointed in our home, Long Beach, California. Our hometown. There was a rollout. A rollout. Now. A rollout that... Was not socially oh distanced. Not socially distanced. There were people without masks on, and the leader of this mural art <laughs> rollout is a anti-masker. I call them pro plaguers, and a Trump supporter of all things. So cool. Yay. And I bet a lot of people d didn't know. And then a lot of people know, but they're like, well, we just don't talk politics and we're in the same derby league. So it's okay. We don't <laughs> not talk politics in this house. <sighs> but yeah. So to see that many people and people are messaging me and they're like, yeah, they've been meeting up every week through the whole pandemic. They've been the league of the people that run it. They've been having like, freaking indoor practices and scrimmages like through the whole pandemic like just being like we don't care and we're not gonna say this league's name but let's just say it's in their name to want to break laws <laughs> yeah so we don't love that um what about the fact that derby practices are starting up i i don't Ugh, it's hard. This is what I've heard. I've heard that some derby leagues have gotten the okay by the city, like a permit by the city, to be able to hold outdoor roller derby practices, socially distanced and with masks. Well, that's what I was going to say is like, if it's approved and you're a small league and you're literally like, I'm not just bullshitting and lying to the city and bullshitting this league, like I'm going to enforce that everyone has their mask on. There's no contact, we're outdoors, then like, okay, like, to each their own, if you want to go and do it, you can do it. Because to be honest, I I came into more contact with more people when I was working at a coffee shop than what one of our friends is going through at practice. Yeah. I was at greater risk, risk at my essential worker job. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that... I, I am, at this point, I am, like, cool with things that are socially distanced outside and with masks. Like, I'm like, cool. I'll take it. Yeah, like, uh, Chub Rolls had a rollout in Alameda, California, and it looked like it was actually, like, supervised, and people were spaced out, and people had their masks on. It didn't look like you saw clutters of people together, from what I've seen anyways. And, like, it's hard for me because it's, like, there's people I know that have had, like, mini rollouts, but they were li literally, like, heavily monitored. Like, people were, like, you have to have a mask on, uh, keep distances, and everyone was respectful. But it's, like, when you have people that literally don't believe in wearing masks and stuff, of course they're not going to make sure the people go. And it looks really awkward when you go on this group Instagram and you see huge groups of people and half of them have a mask on and half of them don't. And they're hugging in the photo. I struggle with knowing when it's okay to have rollouts and, and like do stuff outside on skates and you know, when is it going to be okay? I struggle with that because like at this point, I feel like as long as you're masked and socially distanced, it would be okay. But like, when does that, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And then the other thing is like... I did a poll just to gauge people because, yeah, I really want to have my rollout. But I also am not ignorant to the fact that there's going to be a crap ton of people that come to said rollout. And now I feel, like I've mentioned before, like, oh, I feel like once I have the vaccine, it's easier to gauge. That means a lot of other people around, like, that are like me are getting it. 
but people said I was like June, July, August, next year. And it was pretty much equal for August or next year. And someone messaged me and said, it's really hard to decide this because it's changing. Like this it virus is changing, is changing so every couple months. So it's hard to tell. So like, again, I'm going to wait till May. By summer, I think we'll know. I think now this sounds... I don't know, maybe this sounds selfish, but as soon as I'm, like, immune, like, when 25 days from now, <laughs> I have no problem putting my mask on and skating at the beach, and I won't be having panic attacks anymore, because I won't be thinking, someone's going to sneeze on me, and I'm 100% going to get COVID, and that's what would go through my mind before, and that's why I skated the beach path once through the whole pandemic, like, yeah, not even the whole way. especially with so many new skaters out there. There's so many new skaters, and, um... And the one time that I, or one of the times that I skated the beach path, I had some skateboarder, like, come up and be in my freaking face yep. without a mask. Literally, I was live on YouTube, and he yep. was, like, yelling at me and, like, breathing on me. I was yeah. like, cool. And it's, like, sucks because it's, like, <laughs> I wish we could have, like, a rollout where it's, like, you have to show your vaccination card, and that just seems like, what? Yeah, seems like, you got so your like... card on you? Like, is it laminated? Can you pull it out and show me? So that way I know we can hang out and skate together. Like, what? Like, to be honest, like, I really want to have, like, a skate and barbecue at our house, and I'm only going to invite the people I know that are vaccinated so that everyone can feel comfortable, and everyone, like the CDC says, can take off their mask. We can all skate together, high-five each other, hug each other, eat around each other, and not feel like... This is dangerous because the last time we had like five people over to skate, it was so kind of awkward because like we did have our mask on and we had to we make were sure. all like separated out like so crazy separated. so you couldn't really talk to people. You had to have your own little snack pouch to yourself so it wasn't sharing and it was just like not the same and so like now like a lot of our friends are getting vaccinated like they're either scheduled from so I'm like wow we can have like small little gatherings yeah and for the most part what they're saying now is that most Americans will have the opportunity to have a vaccine by May yeah and that's the other thing I was waiting for I was like when it's open to everyone I would like to give it one month after that and then I think I'd be comfortable, like, having a rollout. I wonder, though, if when it opens up to everyone, if it's going to be impacted. Like, if the if the areas that are giving out vaccines, if they're just going to be flooded. Well, probably. I don't know. I but, we'll like, see. that's why it's been happening in stages, too. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think that's why they're doing it in waves. But, I don't know, like, it's just going to be so cool, like, now I feel confident in going to skate parks again, and I feel like a lot of people, like, even in my head when I saw, like, the rollout, and I was like, well, maybe a lot of them, like, have been vaccinated, and that's why they felt comfortable going, because, like, maybe that would be your mindset, like, why not go to this rollout? Like, I'm good. Like, I don't know. Maybe they did get a shot. Like, but that's me and my Libra talking, where I'm just, like, always trying to see both sides of the story, but then I go back to, like... Oh, the two leaders are, like, no maskers and well, have been and having all, rollouts yeah. even when we were on, like, hardcore lockdown. And also the CDC still said, like, even if you've had your ma your vaccine, you <sighs> need to mask. still wear your mask. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Oh, uh, I don't know. Anyways. When yeah. would you want to go back to practice? Like, if they said, practice is back on, be there next Monday. Is it at Wilmington still? Bayshore Rink, outdoor. Is it contact? No. Uh, are there... We're socially distanced? Well, yeah. I would go as soon as I could put on skates. Nice. Yeah. I even have been talking to one of our friends mm -hmm. about going to their practices as soon as I'm, like, completely safe with the COVID vaccine ah. and can be on skates again. You know what else is really big in our personal wheel world? What? Our ramp had a baby. Our ramp had a baby. And <laughs> she was pregnant. We didn't tell you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We just pulled a Kylie Jenner on you. <laughs> oh, my God. She has. She had a little beautiful baby boy. A little baby boy. This big boy. <laughs> this boy. Dropped B -O -I. in. Hell yeah. And I'm currently trying to teach myself how to sew. It's a good day to be shoved. But now I can just like, well, I had to warm up at the beginning of the day. It's literally been three days of me dropping in. But today I was just like. Not even counting. I was just like, go, go, go. And then I oh, crawl up on the other side and then I go. 
I love it. I'm so proud of you, babe. Thank you. It feels really good. I feel like I was talking, I sent Michelle uh, Estrogen, like, the video, and they were like, wow, you seem, like, reinvigorated. And I was like, I do, because now I have a ramp that I can actually, like, it's not intimidating and feels more like I can push myself without it being an extreme push. Because the other ramp is kind of scary. It has a really steep transition. So I'm like, no, (laughs) I got to start small. (laughs) Yeah. And because we haven't been going to the skate park since at least November, it's like you don't have the opportunity to go on that short one at Crothers. Yeah. So thank you, Uncle Joe, for that stimmy. We and love you, Uncle thank Joe. Thank you, babe, for uh, matching me and in going into this investment. Yep. Because now Rebel can work on all the tricky stalls that she is worried about trying to do on our big ramp. So it's like the perfect, like, learn, like, you're going to be able to UFO stall. You're going to be able to tabernacle. That's the (laughs) hope. I'm scared, but yeah, I'm just scared in general of skating right now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What did the doctor tell you today? Oh my gosh. The doctor told me today that I can start roller skating in two weeks. Ah! Two Two weeks. Two weeks. Can you believe it? Two weeks. And then another two weeks after that, she might be able to actually skate on the little ramp with me. Uh, no one said that. Uh, I thought you said two weeks after that. No, I just said that after two weeks, I'm completely healed mm-hmm. and I can start working up to oh, okay. skating. So it just depends on how well I do. Trust me, two weeks after that, <laughs> she will be pumping on the ramp with me. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, physical therapy exercises that I have to do every day, but... So everyone put that energy out there so we can see Rebel back on her wheels. Yes. All right. <laughs> Let's go to find your skate date. Oh, wow. We have a long one. So find your skate date is a segment where it's like a personal ad that you can send in to find either a platonic or romantic love. When you're looking for a little skater like you, someone you can go to rollouts with or just talk to. Because, yeah, we are in a pandemic right now, but you can still talk all things skate and then meet in person one day and it'd be amazing. Maybe you're vaccinated, maybe they're vaccinated. And that's all she wrote. So, yeah, you can write in to dearskatedate at gmail.com and just tell us a little bit about you. You can also send us a picture so we can post you on our Instagram. Yeah, give us your Insta handle yeah. and your pronouns and a little bit about yourself. Yeah, and what you're looking for. You're looking for another baby skater. You're looking for a pro skater to teach you the ways of the skate park. Looking for a filmer. <laughs> Are you looking for a shove to your rebel? Ooh, sorry, there's only one of us. Okay, so <laughs> we do have a deer shovel this week. No, nope, so, a deer, a okay. find your skate date. Yeah, sorry. So we do have a find your skate date this week. So let's jump on in. <clears throat> hey there. What? <laughs> that is not how this person sounds. Sorry, you're going to sound like this. <clears throat> hey there. Stop it. I'm Stevie. <laughs> okay, fine. Hey there. I'm Stevie. I am 24, a Sagittarius sun. Oh, Sag. Leo moon. Oh. And Virgo. Rising. Oh, what a combo. <laughs> I live just outside of Los Angeles. I work in retail as a bra fit specialist. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> and I'm training to do a prosthesis. Ooh, I said that word right. <laughs> Things for women who have had must Oh, and then I got cocky. I messed up that one. Mesenthelioma? No. What? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Mastec- mastectomies. Oh, mastectomies. <sighs> Words. They're hard. Which is super exciting. I am the type of person that jumps from one hobby to the next super quickly, but roller skating is the one that has really stuck. I started skate. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's happening to me? I'm dying. Um, I started skating a few months ago into the pandemic and have met a lot of amazing people, but I would love to meet more. I haven't been going to the skate... I haven't been going out to skate super often because of COVID and some health issues, which has been really sad, but I'm looking to get back out there. I like all sorts of skating, but I am looking to focus on skate park skating the most. I can get really intimidated or anxious at the parks, so having a hype friend friend. really helps. So true. Um, I'm also just down to vibe skate. That's me. 
beach skate, that's rebel, trail skate, cool, I like that too, or whatever. That's I'm, me. <laughs> I'm always down for an adventure. I am super introverted most of the time, so I find it really hard to make friends, but I figured... Oh, but not ready there. Oh. But I figured I would put myself out there with the help of Rebel and Shove. Hope to meet you soon, Stevie. At Stevie.Kicks. Stevie Kicks. Stevie Kicks. Are you Stevie Kicks's skate date? Because if you are, hit them up at at stevie.kicks. Oh my god, look how cute they are with the little hoops and the I'm red lipstick. I'm pretty sure they have a YouTube channel. Ooh. I'm yeah. also pretty sure that they have... Uh, Given us five stars. <laughs> yeah, and I also think that they have like really cute band tees, I think. Interesting. Not that I've watched your stories or anything. <laughs> I think Rebel's in stalking you, Stevie. No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Oh, such a cool name, too. So, if that sounds cool. Because, like, Stevie Nicks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, she just realized what your name is. <laughs> she was today years old. I was today years old. she realized that Stevie Kicks was for Stevie Nicks. <laughs> that's like yeah. everyone that's like, wait, I get it now. Courtney shoves for Courtney Love. Oh, and I'm like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so if you feel like you could be a perfect hype person for Stevie Nicks, then you should definitely. Stevie Kicks. Oh, wow. See what happens? <laughs> Stevie Kicks, you should definitely hit them up. We will link their Insta in the show notes. Yes, and if you would like to be featured on Find Your Skate Date, just send a little email to dearskatedate at gmail.com I'm super hyphy today anyways I'm delirious <laughs> okay so next up is our section dear shovel dear shovel is where you send in your letters to us and, and we you... give you a free gardening shovel no no <laughs> what <laughs> Side note, there is a drink. Did you show me this? Yeah, you yeah. show me this. There's a drink somewhere that they serve a shovel with the beverage. So you like, can, like, eat your boba. You can, like, shovel the boba. <laughs> anyway, so we really need to go there. <laughs> yeah, period. So, um, so Dear Shovel, we you send us your questions. We give you our advice. Our advice is not necessarily good. Our advice can be, yeah. It's just, we just give our advice. We give our ask opinion. Yes. <laughs> uh, hey, Shove and Rebel. Firstly, I just want to say you guys are amazing. I love Aww. listening to your podcast and the weekend and relaxing. Oh, you have both made me feel so much hope and happiness in a really dark time. Oh, that's sweet. Recently, I was inspired by both of you to finally throw caution to the wind and buy my first pair of skates after years of thinking about it. Woo, woo, hey, woo. hey. I'm an anxious person by default, and Me I've too. always been a fat girl. Me too. As a kid, I was too scared to swim, cycle, or skate because I was worried my body would make it easier for me to fall and look stupid. Now, as an adult, I'm still big, and I'm still anxious. I'm scared of falling and hurting myself, and I can't seem to shake it. I've only... I've been putting my skates on each day, but I am only managing a 5 to 15 minutes of slow rolling, and occasionally I hope my partner, I hold my partner's hand and attempt a bit more. My question is, should I stick at it? Interjection? Yes. Okay, <laughs> continuing. Um, I've been questioning myself, and my anxious brain just tells me I've once again tried something I should have known I'd be bad at. Do you have any tips for getting rid of those niggling thoughts and internalized fat phobia that prevents you from thriving? Thank you both. Hmm. Why'd you look at me? Because it, it I'm the like... patron saint of fat skaters. Yes, because you're the patron saint of fat skaters. So here's what you do. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to buy this, but you can just go to my site and look at the image. Just pull the image out. It's patron saint of fat skaters. I need you to look at it, and you're going to write yourself words of affirmation. You're going to pray to that patron oh saint of fat skaters. <laughs> and be reminded of the fat, anxious, bad bitty that you are <laughs> every day. You're going to grab your gut, and you're going to jiggle it and laugh and be like, I'm great. I'm fine. This is the only body I have. If I'm not happy with it, 
I'm going to change it in a healthy way of just moving my body and my skates. And I'm going to do that not to lose weight. I'm going to do that to be the best version of myself so I become confident. You're going to set small goals for yourself. You're going to also know that you're going to fall. You're going to fall. You're going to laugh. And you're going to laugh more than anyone else that sees you. And even if they do laugh at you, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? F them. They have nothing to do with you. If you're truly as anxious as I think you are, which is the same kind of anxious as I am, you could literally just be sitting and some hear a laugh and automatically your brain, because we're wired differently, says they're laughing at me. Even though they're probably just their friend told them a joke, but that's just how we feel. And we have to get over that and know that we're okay. Even if they are laughing at us, we're okay. So you fall, you laugh, you get back up and you keep going. It's okay to hold your partner's hand because that's supporting and it probably makes you feel better. But let's say you have to skate to the corner or however long. That's your first goal. Then come back home. The next day, you're going to go two blocks down and come back. If you freak out halfway through, just stop. Sit down if you need. Do some breathing exercises. Get back up. Make sure you do it. Setting these small realistic goals is really going to help you. And the only thing that's going to make you be less anxious is confidence and the only way you're going to be more confident is repetition and you're going to be proud of yourself when you set these goals and you actually succeed at doing them so just really just doing it every day or however often that you feel you can is going to help you in so many ways we all suck when we're new we all fall when we knew we all think we're like crappy skaters that we're never going to be better and we just do it Like, I didn't think I was going to drop in, but I did it. And I literally cried like a little baby from tears of joy because I was so proud of myself. And if I would have given up, I would have never experienced that. So you got to just remind yourself, like, no matter what size you are, people feel that way. And falling is going to happen. People are going to laugh no matter what you look like. It's just when we're fat. We, n- we always are like, oh, it's because I'm fat. And it's like, no, it's just because you fell. And come on, falling's freaking funny. I laugh, <laughs> I laugh when my friends fall. And then I'm like, are you okay? And they're like, yep. And then I'm like, ha, ha, ha you fell. And it's just like, <laughs> I think it's funny. Especially when a kid falls. I'm the first one to laugh. And people are like, oh, no, the baby. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> sorry. It's going to happen. But that's why we got to laugh at ourselves. Falling's funny. <laughs> but you're going to be okay. I think that you should try and remember what it is that made you interested in skating and try and tap into that. So whatever it is that makes you excited about skating or interested in skating or want to skate and find ways to feel a little bit of that. So for example, if you're interested in skating because it seems like a fun way to move, then just try and focus on your body moving, even if it's a little bit when you're on your skates and be like, wow, I'm doing it. And in the future, I'll be able to do it more. If you're, if you were excited about skating because you were like excited to feel the wind on your face and, you know, be in the sun or, you know, uh, feel that feeling of, of moving fast, then just try and like maybe go a little bit one direction against the wind and then feel the wind against your face and feel the sun, you know, like find ways to tap into those things that get you excited about roller skating, because I think that that will continue to motivate you to do those small goals that shove has suggested to you yeah and I don't know if you're um in therapy for anxiety but one big thing that's helped me is I started doing it a little bit before but now I really like I'm more mindful about doing it is uh the breathing thing like it sounds crazy but it really 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 helps um and what's because your blood starts pumping and that's just increasing everything else and so that fight or flight kicks in and then all the voices come in and you're like ah I can't do it. <laughs> you creep back inside and you throw your skates off. So for me, it's like really about like breathing in and then holding it, like breathing in for four seconds, holding it for four seconds and exhaling for four seconds. And I'll do that maybe like four or five times until like you notice like your heartbeat's normal and you feel calm. And then I follow that with like just positive things like you're going to do this. You can do it. You've done it before. Like um, just like things that are like real and tangible things like 
I'm skating right now. I'm new. It's okay. I'm going to go skate to that corner right now. And then it's just so much easier because like you're making a plan and it's like calming. You're just like breaking down what's actually happening in the moment and living in that moment is like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad. Yeah. I love that. And even telling yourself that like, as soon as you put on those roller skates, like you are a roller skater. You've already achieved becoming a roller skater. You are part of the roller skate community, yep. a great, wonderful community. As soon as you decided to buy roller skates, you became part of that community. And that means that you are family. You're part of us. And Amen. that does not depend on when you started skating, how good you are, anything like that. Mm-hmm. And how. <laughs> yeah. Well, last up. Oh, we are going to talk about Apple Podcast Reviews? Yeah, we are. We have an Apple Podcast Review, and it is by... It's one of our favorites. It might be, like, one of the people that, like... Have been there since, like... Day one. Yeah, since the get-go. The get-go. Where did that phrase come from? The get-go? From the get-go? Like, Petco? Or, like, geckos? What? (laughs) If Petco and geckos had a baby, it would be from the get-go. I don't know. You got it, and you went with it. Get go. You got it, you go. I don't know. You get up and go. I don't know. This has been drawn on. Anyways. Anyways. (laughs) So, hey, Nick, a.k.a. Tiff. Woo, 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 woo. We love you. And your new lollies. (laughs) Okay. She's out there stunting on them hoes. So, uh, hey, Nick is out there in Florida teaching everyone how it's at. Um, Shut up. Okay, so Hey Nick, a.k.a. Tiff, says, I mean, if you're not doing a little shimmy with Rebel during the intro and ending of the podcast, did you even watch? (laughs) (laughs) LOL. I love that I have more than one way to enjoy this podcast. If I'm driving, it's straight to my Apple Podcast app, home or during breaks at work, and I can visually tune in through YouTube, and they cover a range of subjects <laughs> that is true and make conversations fun impactful and they keep it a book i hope you all get a billion sponsorships love you both oh <laughs> tim you're Thanks, so tim. sweet i know i've now started doing the shimmy like not just in the intro outro but now it's in the transitions too <laughs> yeah you have a dancing problem yeah well you know shimmy, what shimmy. shimmy has a rebel problem <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to shimmy our way out of this date. Yeah, let's shimmy our way out of this date. Um, if you want to be shouted out on our podcast, you can give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and write us a little noty note in the review section. We would absolutely love that. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming on this date with us. That's pretty awesome. I mean, I, I feel like now that more people, especially skaters, are getting vaccinated... That our skate dates can be more poly. Love it. Mm. Love it. Mm. (laughs) All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.